Hello class. Good morning. I hope everybody's doing wonderful today. It's a beautiful day. No snow for a change, so that's good news. Um, I'm just going to start off where we left off on the past video. Uh, this is again going to be about this watercolor technique and the importance of color plates and how um, it's, it's so important for you to uh, work on color plates and these uh, especially when you're doing big designs in class or uh, on your own, um, everything we do should be done at least once before the final. So when we say these little roughs that we always call them in the industry, they really catch all the mistakes um, or most of them before we start the final. Because it's silly to spend all this time and energy perfecting the design and then... Um, you know, just letting the painting go as if, you know, it's like it's like not having a dress rehearsal. Okay, so yesterday, you remember, we did a Sanctuary. And it was, uh, again, one of the uh, favorite wallpapers of ours. And we just kind of dabbled in um, just the watercolor technique, okay? Um, again, we tried different colorways. A lot of times, I'll draw up an image. And this is what I really want you to get in the habit of doing. Let's say you're all finished with your image and you want to do your color work. I would take a nice uh, color Xerox of your image and then use that. Just tape it at the top. Use your um, frisking paper like we showed yesterday. Uh, you know, put that layer down and then trace this up, okay? So then this way, you know, usually, like I said, anywhere is from sometimes it's five to ten colorways. Sometimes you just know you're going to do three or four. Um, and, of course, you have to always work with the mill to see how much are, are they charging for the color plates. Uh, you know, don't forget this all costs money. So sometimes in the past, they just let everybody do as many colorways as they wanted. But it was really a waste of time sometimes because um, you end up running four, five, six of them. So it's just a different market now. Everybody's much more aware of uh, pricing, uh, you know, you need certain colorways and lines. It doesn't always have to be like one green one, one red one, one blue one, one yellow one. It could be colors that are very, you know, trending now and that type of thing. Um, and it's silly to do things that are too close to each other because then you end up having to pick the blue one or the light blue one, that type of thing. Uh, before I start painting, I just want to show you, this is actually a wall covering. Uh, this is a piece that we got in strike-offs. So in strike-offs is, once I do all these wonderful color plates, we send them to the mill, and then they already have the screens, and they've been approved, and we do these strike-offs. So you can see right here with this strike-off, it's the same print as this guy here, you know, different positioning. Uh, but I just want to show you, in this case, all this kind of frosty white that you see there, that's actually the ground coming through. Um, so uh, what happens is, uh, on any other color, you, you have this kind of beige, and you can see the, 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 well, more like a taupe color coming through. And in this case, because I painted the background, I have a screen for the background, you can see that kind of, I call it like frosting coming through. But it's really just because I did it as a half tone, okay? Now in this case, which I love this one, but I did have them redo it um, again. And um, again, this is where I would ask the question in the class. But since I'm in a class by myself, um, I'm going to answer it for you. If you look closely at this, this same frosting and the same kind of tones that should be at the edges here are kind of missing. And what happened, this is a hand screen. What happened is they put too much texture, uh, I'm sorry, too much paint uh, on the screen. Their pressure was too hard. So you get a little bit of that there, but really we should have more like this, okay? So this happens sometimes. You can see here, as well as here, that came out perfectly fine, but that didn't have any of those watercolor technique. But the rest of this, for all intents and purposes, looks like it's like a solid light blue, okay? So I did have them rework this uh, to have, um, you know, more of this tone show in there, okay? So this is things that you've got to be really aware of as a stylist or an art director. 
okay? So it's, um, I really, this is where this fine tuning um, really comes into play. And also with you, especially if you're kind of new to this, you got to make sure, uh, and it's hard sometimes because a lot of times in the past we all, all went down to the mills down south and everything, and because um, most of them are down there, a lot of the mills are up, up north also. And, um, you know, sometimes they're in desolate locations and everything. You stay overnight, and you've got to make all these corrections a lot of times. And then whatever you correct goes right into production. So in this case, this might be 200 rolls that we're creating. Um, in fabric, the same thing. Sometimes it's 1,000 yards. So when you work with the mills, you've got to be very assertive. You've got to be very... Um, uh, focused. You can't just say, well, a little bit more blue, this and that. You've really got to say uh, terms like, we need this 60% darker. Now, once you start working with the company, they know what Mr. Lee means by 60% darker. They, um, they know now what uh, Amy means when she says, just a hair lighter, that type of thing, okay? So right now, on this guy, I did tell the mill, we need... Uh, I, I said about 40% less pressure because I'm totally losing that wonderful effect. I mean, this is this actually looks nice, solid, and I could get away with it, but I couldn't put this in my showrooms and then they do another run, let's say, in a year from now and have it, you know, all more frosted looking, okay? Now, again, also, you can see with this, I went and did our... Um, our paper, I got our my paper ready already, 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 um, and what I did, of course, is get a nice piece of um, watercolor paper, um, you can, some of the pads are really good, like 300 pounds is usually really good, um, so I tape down the whole paper, now it's really important, and a lot of students always just maybe tape a corner or something, but you can see that I've really taped um, the whole edge here, okay? Because on both, all four sides. Because what happens is, especially when you're doing a watercolor technique, inevitably the paper is going to start bending a bit, a little warping. So you really got to get this down because then when you're finished, it's a nice flat piece, okay? So that's really important and um, I can't stress that enough. So really, um, you know, get your paper, you know, get it down, ready to go. And also, um, as we stressed yesterday, really look at what you're painting, okay? So I know, now in this case, I'm just trying different colors now because I actually do want to do a couple more colorways on this one. So um, this is actually only a two color design, including the half, uh, plus the half tone, which they try to do on the same screen, okay? So, but in this case, I'm actually, I'm thinking of redoing this with a third, um, a third color. What I can do is I have the screens for this and um, they can easily add another, I'd have to paint it all out, but I actually wished to make it new instead of the same one, I would love to have a third color in here, okay? It, it'd be wonderful to have, you know, like an accent color in here. So, and also I would, in the salvage, make it a whole new name. Um, this is called... Um, Palais, I believe, um, and I would call it something else, um, you know, um, Palais Royale or something like that, just to know that I'm going to get a new pattern from this. Because, you know, again, class, when you are doing this, you're talking anywhere from um, these screens, because they were half tones, these are close to $1,000 each. So um, before I even started, you know, I had a $2,000 bill uh, just to get these engraved. So you can imagine when we're talking 10 to 12 screens, you're paying 10 to $12,000, anywhere from eight to 10 to 12,000, just to have the engraving. And, and, it's, and it's definitely worth it, as you saw from some of the slides we showed from the mill and stuff, they work so hard and it's, it's really, um, it's one of those areas when you do hand screening that it, it's almost the, for the love of hand screening, okay? Because it really is a lot of work. And you can see uh, in a lot of ways, um, you, it wouldn't be exactly, oh, they're making a fortune on us because there's, 
It's not that at all. That they really work hard. Because remember, every time we do a color, when they roll the screens, they have to skip the next one. Let this one dry. Go on to the next one. Skip, dry, skip, dry. And you can imagine, um, you know, five or six more screens, okay? So, again, I drew this up just to resemble this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with this now. I, I'm, I'm kind of liking this purpley, um, purple tones um, with a little bit of mulberry in here and some of that, like, sea green. Uh, so I'm going to just, for myself, I, again, with this watercolor technique, you, I think sometimes the deeper you go, the better, if that's the effect you want. Um, so I'm actually going to start with uh, this leaf right in here, okay? Um, I'm going to start at the bottom. Um, and again, just be careful a lot of times when you draw this in. I can see right, right away. I didn't quite have this. I could have gone a little bit deeper on the drawing. So I'm just fixing this. I can see it, but I don't... Just for your sake, meaning... Um, it's not as obvious um, because I'm right here, okay? So what I'm doing is I just start that bottom part here, okay? I get a nice build of, of paint. I am working on both sides at once. And then as we talked yesterday, I just put my brush in water and I kind of let, let it explode, okay? Uh, you got to work fast. It's kind of like, like why I like this technique. You got to work fast. And already you can see this kind of nice buildup I'm getting, okay? But if I wait too long, I'm going to have, I'm, you're going to really be able to see the marks, okay? Um, where the paint is. So I'm pushing this around. Now, I'm also, again, I'm actually using no paint on this. And I'm doing this, you know, really kind of round... I'm almost like kneading dough, if, uh, if, you, if you can see this. I'm letting that go out, playing with that, making sure that that bottom leaf uh, has texture, okay? Again, adding a little bit more water on this, and now I'm pressing it off, okay? So I've got this kind of build up, and you can see what I did here. Um, and I, I had to do it this way because I can see from having the strike off that if I didn't do that I would definitely have problems down the line um, so even if if they were to go you know a little harder on the pressure I've got enough of the negative space working with the um, the half tones to make it work well okay also another thing that that I would do with this pattern um, is I I did make a screen, I'm sorry, I did make a screen for um, the background. And I have to say, uh, on any of these now, I'm going to make sure that um, I have a background screen on this. This way it makes it different than the other ones. Uh, you can see this is on a white ground, this is on kind of a creamy ground. And I like it, uh, I like this one a lot um, because it's got that kind of nice technique and some of the other ones worked really well um, on metallic grounds. Um, but because I'm having this effect with the watercolor, I really got to kind of play my cards right where it shows up as much as it can. Because, you know, again, I'm paying more money to have this technique because of the engraving. And I'm also um, want to keep this kind of in the same feeling as the original, okay? Um, so here we go again. Now remember, these are color plates. So no matter, I can make a little bit of an error on here and there's no, uh, nobody's gonna kill me uh, because we've already had the screen engraved. So whatever's on the screen is, is gonna be printed. But a lot of times, uh, just like when you show me your final projects, um, in school or if you do a rough or something, you know, presentation is everything. So if I do a, you know, a sloppy colorway or, you know, oh no, it's supposed to be purple, this or that, that, you can't have tons of directions, okay? You really got to be focused and concise because, again, um, in the mill, 
they are working with a number of companies. Uh, the mills that I work with, there's at least 30 other companies working with them. They don't have time. This isn't a, any kind of hobby for them or anything. They don't have time to, uh, you know, question, you know, what I'm doing or what whoever's doing. They really need to see, uh, you know, what colors I'm working on, you know. Now, again, uh, according to this, um, you know, again, I, I, I painted this, so I, I know the design pretty well. But I keep going back looking at this because there are certain areas, as you can see, uh, especially on this guy. This one's very obvious. Um, I'm going back and putting up this color, you know, to make this, you know, play with that wonderful half tone I created, you know, and I'm, I'm pushing up. Now, I try not to. Sometimes you can't help it. You see what I'm doing here. Around the edges is definitely a little bit more um, uh, painted, okay? Um, you know, a little bit deeper, uh, deeper uh, tint. So now I'm just going back. And again, I still have a whole bunch more to do. So again, I go back to this. And of course, on the other side of this is all these different colorways, which I can kind of flip up for you to see. Um, these are all different colorways I did. And it does show you the difference with that second tone. Okay, I'll show you that at the end. Um, but here I go again. I'm underlying um, where the shadow probably would be. Again, that kind of things you've got to make up yourself. Um, use your artistic kind of license to play with that. But you can't go wrong with doing the underbelly a little bit darker, okay? Now, I'm going right into that area because my paint is wet enough. I'm going right into that area and getting this wonderful shading, okay? And I know the tops. I, I, I can tell a little bit from this and I can definitely tell from that. The tops are look like they're frosted. Now, the other thing which I stressed a lot yesterday, um, make sure I should really actually have another thing of water here, just especially if I change color. Just make sure that you've got enough paint here. And um, now there's two ways of doing this. I'm doing it both ways. Uh, I'm doing my shading in... Uh, it dries sometimes too fast for you to... Uh, you know, I couldn't do the whole thing and then do my shading. It would dry up too fast. Um, but also, be careful. Also, I would protect the drawing. Um, just be careful. Get that around here, okay? So we have nice... Um, you've really got some nice uh, strokes going on here. Uh, and, and you can really see now, you can really tell the difference where this, um, you know, lends itself, okay? So, this is a great uh, technique to do. Uh, I'm just going to finish up this right here. This is a great technique to do. It can take something that it's just kind of flat. A lot of times we make do damasks, and next thing you know, they look like everybody else's. They just, you know, they're just kind of flat. And, you know, and that and that could be a really nice look. But also, this just makes it um, a little bit more ethereal, not as heavy. Uh, yes, here and there, I can go back and use that same color, to, like in here. Um, I just, after I just looked at that, I was a little shy with the color in there, okay? So, wonderful looking. I know that I'm, I'm kind of liking this color here a lot. It's, it's very much in style for the last couple years. Just want to show you one more thing. Um, these are all the other colorways. And this is actually how we show our product. We have them in plastic sleeves. And you can see it on a beautiful metallic with um, gold splatter. Uh, this is just on white with gray. Um, and then you can see here, this really shows also. Um, the, the half toning on this one worked really well, as well as it did here and there, okay? This is the only one that uh, I had printed over. And actually, uh, uh, this is it. Okay, so again, you could put these, the mill supplies you a lot of times with the substrates, and that's why, like, the gold metallics really work well, okay? Well, thanks for joining us today. I hope this, um, you got something out of this, and again, just another technique to put in your toolbox, 